and still away and say unto the people, He is risen from the dead. So the last error shall be worse than the first. Pilate said unto them, Ye, are, ye have a watch, go your way and make it as sure as you can. So they went and made sepulchre sure, sealing the stone, sealing the stone and setting a watch. Hallelujah. Praise Master Jesus. Now quickly, let's quickly analyze where we read from. The Bible says here, Jesus was called the deceiver. They called Jesus the deceiver in verse 63 of Matthew 27. They said, do you remember Jesus said that he will arise after the third day? Now the problem here was uh, they were thinking what Jesus has said is, is a lie. So they find it so difficult to believe. Therefore they caught in the deceiver and they all gathered. They said, oh, let's put the biggest stone to cover this man so that he will not come out, so that his disciples will not come and steal his body and say that ah, um, we have, uh, he has risen. Amen. And the Bible and they said in verse 64, so that the last error will not be worse than the first error. Hallelujah. So these people understood that Jesus was going to rise up. So they were waiting that if maybe the stone could hold him, they laid the biggest stone, they laid the biggest stone, thinking that the stone could hold Jesus, thinking that the grave could hold him. Now in, verse, in chapter 28, verse 1, let's read. The Bible says, In the first, in the end of Sabbath, as it began to dawn towards the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and other Mary came to the sepulchre, to see the sepulchre. And behold, there was a great earthquake, on the line, a great earthquake. And the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the from the door and sat upon it. Hallelujah. I love this. The Bible says, and the angel of the Lord came down. Every time the presence of the Lord comes down, there is always an earthquake in the kingdoms of darkness. There is always an earthquake in the earthquake in the kingdoms of the wicked ones. And the Bible says that as the angels of God came down, there, there was an earthquake. I'm dealing on the message which I titled the good news. Now the news they have tried to abort it was that let's place wash there. Let's put some sodias up so that it will not rise up. Let's put the biggest stones up so that it will not rise up. But beloved, I've come to tell you the stone could not hold Jesus. The grave could not hold Jesus. Even death itself could not hold Jesus. And therefore, I speak to you that nothing can hold you. You are untouchable in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And the Bible says in verse 2, And behold, there was a great earthquake, for the angel of the Lord descended. Every time the angels of God come down, there is always an earthquake, there is always a trouble in the kingdoms of darkness. And the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back away the stone from the door and sat upon it. He, he did not only roll away the stone, he rolled it away from the door and sat upon it. Sitting upon it means uh, he has conquered, he has victory. Hallelujah. And his content and his story was like a lightning and his, and his raiment white as snow. For the fear of him, the keepers did shake and became as dead men. These were the same so they are men that were positioned to watch Jesus, to keep him from rising, to keep him from, from going ah. The same when they saw the presence of the angels, uh, the Bible says they became shaving and they were like dead men. Hallelujah. Praise the living God. And the angel answered and said unto the women, Fear ye not, for I know whom ye seek. Jesus, which was crucified. I know whom ye seek, Jesus, whom was crucified. In verse 6, he is not here, for he is risen. Hallelujah. He is what? Not here. He is not here in the grave anymore. Jesus is no longer in the grave. Jesus is no longer in the tomb. 
Jesus is no longer in the cross. Jesus is risen. And that is the reason for our, our celebration. That is the reason we gather all over the world. The Christians, believers, all over the world are gathered because Jesus is risen. Hallelujah. If Jesus had not risen, our faith would have been in Jupiter. Our faith would be in, in, in chaos. There is no hour we preach. I love this Apostle Paul said in 1 Corinthians 15. He said, if Jesus did not rise up, he said, therefore, therefore, our faith is in vain. Our Christianity is fake. If Jesus did not rise up, listen to the Lord, brothers and sisters, if Jesus did not rise up, what we are telling you now would not be so real. But we have experienced his power. We have experienced his resurrection power. We are seeing him do mighty work. And therefore, we are bought to declare to the world that he is the king of kings. He is the raising king and he is the soon coming king. Hallelujah. I've come to tell you that Jesus Christ is the raising king. He is the soon coming king. So brothers and sisters, I want you to have faith in his resurrection. I want you to put yourself also in him and say, Lord, today you resurrected many years ago, 2,000 years ago. Even so now, I resurrect with you. Hallelujah. Praise the living God. And the Bible says in verse 6, He is not here, for He is risen. This is the good news. This is the good news, brothers and sisters. He is no longer in the grave. The grave could not hold Him. He is risen. He is risen. This is our testimony. This is our joy that Christ our Savior, Christ our life is risen from the dead. If Christ did not raise from the dead, hallelujah. Amen. So, brothers and sisters, Christ is risen, and today is our day of joy. It's a day of testimony. It's a day of celebration. So, I want you to celebrate it and say, Lord, I thank you for your resurrection that took place on that day. So, Lord, I bless your name. Hallelujah. He is risen, for he is not here. And he said, come and see the place where the Lord lay. And go quickly and tell his disciples, for he is risen from the dead. And behold, he goeth before you into Galilee. There shall you see him. And lo, I have told you. I love this. He said, go quickly and tell his disciples. It's a command. You beloved brothers and sisters, hearing the sound of my voice now. The angels of God, the Spirit of God is telling you, go and tell the people of the world that Jesus is risen. Jesus is not dead. Jesus is not like every other, every other prophet, every other religion where their leaders are, are dead. But Jesus is risen. Hallelujah. Amen. So this is the good news I have come to share with you today. That Jesus Christ rose from the dead. Jesus is no longer in the grave. Jesus is no longer in the cross. Amen. So this is our victory as believers. This is our faith as believers. Hallelujah. So let's take our Bible quickly in Acts chapter 2 verse 24. Acts chapter 2 verses number 24. Amen. I would love you to return your Bible with me. It is very, very important. Acts chapter 2 are you there? Verses 24. I read in Jesus' name. Whom God has raised, whom God has raised up, having loosed the pains of death, because it was not possible that he should be holding of it. Whom Jesus Christ, the Almighty, the Father, has raised up, that it was not possible that the grave could hold him. It was not possible that death could hold him. The grave was defeated when Jesus died. When he resurrected, the grave lost his power. No wonder Apostle Paul says in 1 Corinthians 15, he said, Oh grave, where is thy power? In verse 55, Oh death, where is thy victory? Hallelujah. Christ is risen. So therefore, we are risen with him. It was not possible that death could hold him. It was not possible that he should be holding by the power of the grave. When Jesus died, he went in to take the key of life, the key from the devil. Amen. Hallelujah. So I'm so glad.
to share this news with you, beloved brother, that this is my joy as a pastor. This is my joy as a son of God. This is my joy as a believer. I want you to also have the same joy that Christ your hope, that Christ your life, that Christ your redeemer, that Christ your savior is risen. And therefore, you cannot live a life of bondage. And therefore, you cannot live a life of limitation. And therefore, you cannot live a life of shame. Why? Your author, your maker, your finisher, your, 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 your Lord has risen from the grave. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the living God. And the Bible says, Whom God has raised up, having loosed the pains of death. There were pains of death holding him. On Friday, when he died, he was taken to the tomb. On Saturday, he went down to hell. He was wrestling and battling for you to be free. On this beautiful day, this Sunday morning, this first day of the week, he rose again and said, Oh, my son, my daughter, I am back to give you life and life in abundance. I am back to make you see the life of God while you live upon the face of the earth. Beloved brothers and sisters, I want you to have faith in God that if Christ raised Jesus from the dead, the Bible says, if the spirit that raised Jesus from the dead, if that spirit dwells in you, it shall fertilize your mortal body. You are going to ask God for his Holy Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead. When that same spirit dwells in you, you, are, you become unfailable. You cannot fail anymore. You cannot seek anymore. You cannot fall into the trap of the wicked one. Why? There is a spirit that is dwelling in you. When the spirit is fatter, is quickening your mortal body, your life becomes the life of Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. Please, let's take quickly 1 Corinthians chapter 15. 15. I will read from verse 11. It said, Therefore, whether we I or they, so we preach, and so you believe. Now, if Christ, I love this, this is a very big discussion. Now, if Christ be preached that he rose from the dead, I'll say some among you that there is no resurrection of the dead. This is a very, very big issue. There are people who don't believe that Jesus Christ rose from the dead. I have come to tell you, if Jesus did not rise, our faith, our message would have been fake. What I'm telling you now, beloved brothers and sisters, is the testimony of his resurrection. Is the power of his resurrection, which is the good news. Mohammed died. Nowhere Mohammed rose up again. The Buddhists and every other religion, their leaders died. No one could come back to life. Only Jesus, the King of Kings. Only Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Only Jesus, our life. It is only Him that rose from the dead. Every other religion agrees with me that Jesus is Lord. Some call Him prophet. Some call Him different name. But I've come to tell you, He's the Son of God that was dead on Friday and rose again on Sunday by the power of his Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. So when that Holy Spirit dwells in you, you will also rise from wherever you have sunk, from wherever you are falling, from wherever you are down, you will also rise. I pray as I preach right now, that whatever that is holding you back, that, that that thing will lose its power away from your life in the name of Jesus Christ. That you will resurrect because Jesus Christ resurrected from the dead. As death could not hold him, therefore, no power, no sickness, no failure, no disappointment, no frustration, no barrenness, no death can hold you back. Every chance of the wicked ones that is upon your life, holding you back to stagnation, to barrenness, to sickness, to disappointment, to failure, in the name of Jesus, I command them to break now and I declare you free by the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. 
in verses 13, he said, If there be no resurrection of the dead, then Christ did not raise at all. If there is no resurrection, that that even it should be clear in John 11, verse 44, verse 40 to 44, Jesus first rose Lazarus. Remember, he said, I am the resurrection, I am the life. I am the resurrection. In other words, Jesus has seen the death and his resurrection, and he came back in time of Lazarus. So Jesus told Mary and Martha, I am the resurrection and the life. In other words, I was dead, but now I am alive again. I was down. Now I am again. Amen. Praise the living God. So beloved brothers and sisters, if Jesus did not rise, if there is no resurrection, our message is fake. Thank God my message is not fake. It is not my message. It is his testimony. It is his message. I am only a witness. I am only a testifier of what he is doing and what he has done. Hallelujah. So this should be clear. The reason why we celebrate the Easter, it is because he rose again. Because of his resurrection, that has given us the boldness to stand everywhere we go, to declare Jesus Christ everywhere, to declare Jesus Christ every day. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the living God. In verses number 14, if Christ be not risen, Listen now. If Christ be not risen, then our preaching is in vain. Then our preaching is what? In vain. So Christ is risen. That is why our message is powerful. Christ is risen. That is why our message is sound. That is why we possess the power the world cannot understand. Because Jesus Christ is risen from the dead. Hallelujah. If Christ be not risen, then our preaching is vain and our faith is in vain. Yea, we are all found first witness of God because we testify of God that he raised Christ. Whom he raised not all, if so be that the dead rise not. So the issue is, if you don't believe that dead who come to lie, then we are liars. And we are bearing false witness that God raised Jesus to lie. Because I believe, that is why I speak. Therefore, I believe, that is why I speak. Jesus is risen and he is risen. Amen. To them that believe, they are called sons. To those who do not believe, the gospel is hidden from them. Why? The God of this world has blinded their mind that they might not know the truth. So for me, Jesus Christ is risen. And that is why I brought you this good news this morning that he is no longer in the grave. The good news I brought to you this morning, beloved, the good news I bring to you is Jesus Christ is no longer in the grave. He is risen. And this is our joy. This is our testimony. That he who was dead is now upon the throne. At the right hand of God the Father. Who shall come again to judge the dead and the living. Amen. Amen. In verses number 15. Sorry, 16. If the dead raised not, raised not, then Christ did not raise. So what I'm saying now, if you don't believe that the dead don't come alive, and come again to life, then Christ is not risen at all. Amen. I believe in what I'm saying, and that is what I'm saying. It does not depend on me to raise anyone to life. It depends on whom I serve. So when we pray, we have faith in Him that He is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all I ask or think by His power that is at work in me. So I believe what I'm saying. Therefore, I speak because He is risen. Amen. Verses number 17. 
If Christ be not raised, your faith is in vain, and you are yet in your sin. Then they which are falling asleep in Christ are perish. So the people who are asleep, the people who die now, if Christ be not raised, so is eternal damnation. Why? They bear false witness. But thank God, Christ is risen. So therefore, everyone who sleep in Christ will always rise up in Christ on that beautiful day when the trumpet will sound. And we that are alive, if we are still alive then, we shall be we shall cut up and meet up with him. Amen. Hallelujah. So this is the message I bring to you, brothers and sisters, that Jesus Christ is risen. So take it and believe the message because it is of God. The reason for the season is Jesus. The reason why Christians celebrate Easter it is not because to eat or drink. It is because he died and rose. Many died, but not all that will rise up. But Jesus, by the power of his Holy Spirit, by the Spirit of God, by the power of the Most High, that same Spirit that moved upon the surface of the deep, that same Spirit that moved upon the surface of the water, the same Spirit moved and raised Jesus from the dead. Hallelujah. Praise the living God. So, verses 18. And they which are falling asleep in Christ are perished. In verses 19, we are a lot more. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men miserable. Liberados, Qatar. Now, if only in this war, I can preach this message, I don't believe with my heart, and therefore there is no kingdom set for me. I, I, there is no life after here. I am miserable. Amen. I am miserable. So our life is not only here, we are, we are heading for the continuous life in Christ. The life after we put off this body and when the, the, the corruption shall meet with the incorruptible. When we might have come back to life again. Hallelujah. Praise the living God. In verses number 20, now, is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruit of them which slept? Hallelujah. He's become the first fruit of them which slept. So he is risen. 